Hello Steelers, and in this video I'm going to show you how I painted these 15mm British riflemen from the Napoleonic Wars. The most famous of these were the 95th Rifles, but there was also the 60th Rifles and the King's German Legion Rifles. They more or less wore the same uniform, so this guide will work for both of those as well. These figures are from Blue Moon, and I'll be using them in sharp practice, which is why they are individually based. If you do enjoy this video, please do consider subscribing to the channel for more great wargaming content. I will also link all of the paints I used in the description below. Come on then, you yellow bastards! After preparing the figure and cleaning off any excess flesh and moulding materials, I then super glued them onto an MDF base. These are 15mm in diameter, which I think is a good size for the size of the figure. I sped up the drying time here by using a CA accelerator sprayed onto the base, and the next step was to prepare the base using polyfiller. This is a cheap one I bought locally, but any filler type material will work. Using a flat headed screwdriver I ensure that the base of the figure is covered by the polyfiller, making a smooth transition on the base. You're a Scots bastard. The next thing to do is to prime the figures. You can do this anyway by using a spray can, an airbrush or a hand brush as I'm doing here. If I was doing lots of figures then I would generally spray them all at once. Move you bastards! The main uniform of the rifleman is a bottle green. You can use whatever you want for this and what looks right, but I used Vallejo's Luftwaffe camouflage green. Here I'm just blocking in the tunic. You don't need to be particularly neat at this point because other paints will cover up your mistakes anyway. And this is just a very quick way of doing batch figure painting without going cross-eyed. Hope you lazy bastards! My research for these figures told me that during the 1815 campaign the riflemen wore both green and grey trousers. So I decided to do half with grey trousers just to break up the unit a little bit and also just to add some visual interest. And for this I used Vallejo's neutral grey and I also painted the blanket roll in the same colour. You fat bastard. The next stage was to paint the flesh of the faces and the hands. I used Vallejo's sunny skin tone for these figures, but whatever you have will work as well. Just be careful when painting the face as you don't want to get it on the tunic. You can always go back and repair mistakes later, but it's better to try to be neat the first time. Mongrels bastards. The next stage is the biggest and the longest. This might be where priming in black may have helped as there's a lot of black on these figures. Their boots, their cross belts, backpack, cartridge cases and shakos were all black in colour to help with camouflaging them in the field. This is quite a long process and it's one that's worth taking your time over, as being neat now will save you time in repairing any areas where the black paint gets where it shouldn't. This is also why it's better to break your figures down into smaller groups, so doing this stage won't feel like such a long slog and it also stops your eyes from getting overly tired as well. As you can see here on the shako, I've already painted the braiding in the same green as the tunic, so I just cut in with the black around the already painted details as neatly as possible. You stupid bastard! Now it's time to paint the musket stocks and the hair, and for this I use Vallejo's beige brown. Just a few lines is all that's needed here, it's very quick, very simple. There's a French bastard in these mountains called Loop. I will paint the base next. This is a very easy task using Vallejo's Flat Earth, which is also my favourite named paint. It's a mid-brown, which will just be covered in static grass later in the process, but it also gives a nice base colour for the green grass later anyway. Just try to be neat around the boots, but don't forget you can always go back later anyway and tidy up any mess that you make. Bastards. They also have a linen haversack that sits across their hips. I paint this in Vallejo's khaki. If you want, you can also paint the strap that goes across the chest, but I didn't bother. A crafty little bastard. The rifle barrel is then painted in gunmetal grey. This is just another couple of straight lines that are very easy to paint. The bastard's going to get help. The standard British water canteen was painted in blue for the entire army, and the riflemen are no different. So here I'm just using Vallejo's blue for this. Dick Sharp, bastard. And then finally for the block colouring, a tiny blob of oily steel just for the shako plate. Bastard. Once all the block colouring is done, it's time for my favourite part, applying the Agrax Earthshade. This is a great wash from Games Workshop and it settles nicely in all the creases and the details in the model. You might want to tease it out to some of the deeper recesses though, just so it doesn't pull in there, but that can be easily done while it's still wet. That knows how to deal with bullying bastards like you. Once we've left the Agrax to dry for a while, it's now time to begin finishing off the miniatures. This is my simple version of the Kelvin Delimore three shade method. I use block colours as the base, with the Agrax as the shade, and then I highlight all the parts once more with the original colours I used in the block colour stage. I don't highlight everything, but there's certainly nothing stopping you from doing this if you want. I concentrate on the tunics and anything green, the grey trousers and backpacks, and specifically the hands and the faces. 
The latter simply because we are drawn as humans towards people's faces, even from tabletop distance. I also highlight the haversack and the water bottle, again just in their original colours. Once the highlighting is done, I use matte spray varnish to protect the figures and then move on to finishing the base. For this, I paint undiluted PVA glue onto the base and then sprinkle static grass over the top of that. Once they're dried, they're all done. Bastard! Bastard! This is a very simple method for getting figures on the tabletop quickly, and even though I have ignored a lot of detail, they look good from a tabletop distance of about 3 feet. There's nothing stopping you from painting in as much detail as you like, but most of it just would not be seen from a gaming distance anyway. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider subscribing, if you haven't already, and do check out my Patreon and coffee. All of it helps towards the ongoing output of the channel. Come on then, you yellow bastards!